Welcome everyone. This is the first edition of Agent Talks, a new series brought to you by the Authors Guild Foundation in partnership with two excellent agent groups, the Association of American Literary Agents and Literary Agents of Change. Uh, we hope this Agent Talk series will provide useful insights to the perspectives of agents and what agents do. Each time we're gonna have a, a visiting agent report on a, an area of their expertise. Um, we know the querying trenches can be stressful and a bit mysterious, so we think this series will also be beneficial to sort of pull back the curtain and get to know some agents one by one. Today we have Monica Rodriguez, a junior agent and the director of brand management at Context Literary Agency. Uh, here to discuss the author agent revision editorial process and to moderate the discussion and help offer another perspective we have samantha fabian an agent at root literary uh, the authors guild foundation thanks all our donors for helping us put on free programming like this to educate and support writers uh, if you're not a member of the authors guild welcome and feel free to visit authorsguild.org to learn more about what we do and finally thanks to the audience for being here and submitting questions in advance uh, if you have additional questions, you can type those in the Q&A box, and we'll leave some time at the end of the hour to answer some of those. Um, we might have, not have time to get hyper-specific about one book, one niche genre, but we'll certainly dis dis discuss as much as we can. And uh, oh, one other note, uh, you can check out Monica Rodriguez's manuscript wish list for more info. We'll include that link for you, and we'll email her querying instructions to everyone who registered for this event. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to our moderator, Samantha. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, as Johnny said, this presentation is hosted by Authors Guild, as well as the American Association of Literary Agents and Literary Agents of Change. My name is Samantha Fabian, and I'm a literary agent at Root Literary. Along with being the moderator this evening, I'm also a co-director of the Mentorship Committee within AALA and LAOC. Apologies on <laughs> stuttering on the acronyms. The mentorship committee was founded to serve historically underrepresented groups, particularly people of color in the agenting community, and it seeks to increase retention and promotion. This is one of those opportunities we're offered within our year-long mentoring pro program, and we're thrilled to see such a wonderful turnout for a member of our cohort, Monica Rodriguez, as she leads this presentation on revising with an agent. Just to give you a little bit of a bio on Monica, Monica Rodriguez is the director of brand management and a junior agent at Context Literary Agency. Her love for books can be traced back to elementary school where the best days were spent attending book fairs and author readings. Monica is also a first gen Mexican American writer and reminds people how lovely they are at findalovelylife.com. Her mission as an agent is to help uplift underrepresented voices in publishing, specifically within the Latinx community. So without further ado, I'll let Monica take over. And yeah, I'll be here moderating the questions. Feel free to send them throughout the presentation. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, let me share my screen and get everything situated on my end. All right. Yes, so thank you so much, uh, Sam, again, for that wonderful intro and for the Authors Guild for this lovely opportunity to talk to some of y'all and hopefully come up from this answering some questions of curiosity. Uh, I always say my middle name is Transparency, so hopefully a little insight on some of the ways that um, agents do revise with their authors can send a little bit of hope as you navigate whatever part of your journey you're on. I'm really excited to talk about one of my favorite things in the writing process, and that really is revising. Uh, and, and since revising is such a long road and never really a straight line, uh, let's look at my path to publishing because it's not a, what you probably expect. So. After graduating with a degree in public relations from the University of Texas at Austin, I actually started a marketing career and I supported nonprofits and the arts. I did some time at an ad agency and then I spent the last six years working in tourism on multi-million dollar advertising campaigns. And that's me in my Zen pose watching the camera on a commercial shoot in Big Bend. Uh, but I was really missing my first love, which was books. And so on that sort of revising path of my career, I had been a writer in the query trenches for my own book and realized there weren't enough Latinx agents out there. And a lot of the public relations skills that I had from the past 10 years were sort of 
getting a spotlight again as I tracked my own submission. And that's where I found an internship at Context Literary Agency. And I applied and met our president, Tamar Rudzinski, who was looking for an internal marketing person for the agency. Um, and it is a remote agency. So I'm currently based in Austin. And I started as the uh, director of brand management, where I help support the plans, uh, publicity plans for our context titles. And I also do monthly seminars on different marketing topics. But I opened as a agent, or I opened for queries as an agent in 2022, and now have 12 clients across all categories and sold my first book this summer. And my intern, Jude, which might pop in and out here, is my dog, was promoted to assistant shortly after. Uh, my mission as an agent is to uplift underrepresented voices in publishing. There he is, specifically within the Latinx community. Overall, the themes I gravitate towards are stories about identity, family relationships, and travel. And I'm open to all categories. And yes, I do read to my dog. So just like my path uh, to publishing is different, that's kind of how revising works. It might never be the same for each book or for each author, but I wanted to dive into what revision is and what it could look like with that partnership. I'm a really big definition person, and when I'm trying to figure things out for myself, I'll Google what is the definition for this. So thinking about just the process of revising, I wanted to start with looking at the definition for writing. So writing is the skill of marking coherent words sometimes on paper and composing text. And I wanted to emphasize the word skill because it's definitely something that you're gonna continue to work on. And that's why you'll often hear that it's paired with craft. So it's something that you make and refine over time. Um, and the sec it is also uh, the activity or occupation of composing text for publication. I'm emphasizing publication here since we're talking about the relationship with revising with your agent today. And revising is sort of re-examining and making alterations to what you've written and emphasis on re-examining in the sense that you're going to look at this a lot, which is a great segue to the next definition of revising, which is to look over again in order to correct or improve. Emphasis on improve, because revising with your agent is an opportunity for you to improve your work and get it ready for submission, which will then lead to, unfortunately, more revising, because writing is rewriting, in essence. It's sort of a forever process. Um, I use an infinity symbol because I truly think it is infinite. Now, I think there might be a point where you do let go of the revision process, but then it will be boomerang back to you. And that is through what I like to view as this timeline. So once you sign with your agent and you embark on that submission revision journey together um, and you complete that part of the process, you're going to submit it, uh, your agent will submit it uh, to editors at various imprints and publishing houses. Um, and it might hit an UNO reverse card, and you'll get a revise and resubmit, and you and your agent will decide um, if that's the best revision, that process that you want to go towards. But the goal here is to find the right partner. And what I like to tell my clients is that we're looking for our third musketeer. So as that process flows through, you eventually sign with a publisher and then you revise that with an editor for publication, which is why that little infinity symbol I have here is gonna continue to make an appearance throughout the presentation. So since we're all kind of on different timelines in our journey, I wanted to take a step back and talk about the state of your book before you even start querying or signing with an agent. Um, and your manuscript, the state of your manuscript should be at a point where you're ready to look for an agent after you're sort of past that first draft stage and more so in the three to five plus round stage. So you've asked for feedback and implemented the things that resonated with you. 
you've gone in and edited the manuscript more than once, you read it out loud to yourself, um, and you're at a point where you've done all that you can to get it this far. And this is a great milestone, writing the first draft, revising the first draft, getting it critiqued or getting it viewed by a beta readers or critique group. Um, and it's a long marathon. And so this is a milestone and don't forget to celebrate those small victories and the steps forward into getting it ready to go and query agents. And so I'm going to flash forward through the trauma of the query trenches and put you in a place where you've made it through the journey. And um, now you're having the call with an agent and you're signing with an agent. Um, what's next? And I'm calling that the submission revision. And I like to define the agent author relationship as a creative business partnership where communication is key. I myself am an editorial agent and with the current state of the publishing industry right now, it's really hard not to be an editorial agent. Um, but the idea is to grow and water your book together to get it to the next step of the timeline. So, the editorial work really starts with the offer call. And this is the first stab at getting your book ready for submission. So during the offer call with your agent, they might share their editorial feedback, which can spark new ideas. But the notes from the agent should guide you. The agent isn't there to write it for you. So if you're unsure of the feedback, make sure to communicate if you need the notes in writing. Once you've signed with your agent and you agree, that's sort of the direction you want to take the book. Take notes on the call with the agent. See if the feedback resonates with your vision for the book. And make it a conversation to see if their process also works for you. And if you don't agree with their feedback, you don't have to sign with them. Editorial involvement really depends by author and agent relationship by project. It could be super developmental or more structural, but your agent should look at your work before going out on submission. And you should both be in agreement with the version that is gonna go out on sub. So as you prepare for submission with your agent, the book might need multiple rounds. And it doesn't mean that you failed or you're, that your writing isn't perfect. You're working with your agent to improve it. So your agent will usually need a few weeks to read to give the best feedback. And a lot of time, it's not necessarily the initial editing that we need the time for. It's also the time to process an idea or come up with a suggestion that can be that missing puzzle piece the manuscript needs. And sometimes that might take a little bit more time for your agent to figure that out and have an aha moment to then pass along to you. But every agent is different and the amount of workload that they're trying to balance, but also just as long as they keep an open line of communication with you. And it, that's a green flag on time, um, turnaround time for process. And in the meantime, you can take a break, you can read more in your category, Maybe you decide that you want to write something else, make sure you sort of, maybe for fun, but communicate that with your agent so that you're both on board on the same project. Um, with my clients, it's usually a few weeks up to a month, and I'll let them know if I need more time. Um, if there's something in your agent's feedback that you don't agree with, it's best to get on a call to discuss it. For example, if it's a character trait that's really important to you or it's a scene that you feel needs to be there, it's important to give your agent that context so that they can help navigate a solution that you both can agree on to set you up for success. And in that process, your agent might uh, give you an edit letter that with different areas to address the revision. So think macro versus micro, and some macro examples could be new scenes to help with the pacing, more character development, if one perspective feels lighter than the other, or for micro examples, maybe it's more details in the chapters that need clarification, or typos they flag, or tracking consistency throughout the plot. And these are things that you can keep in mind as you write your drafts and edit before you work with an agent. 
But even after you do this, that's why it's really nice to have that creative business partnership with your agent that points things out to you or addresses things that you might have not considered that open up a whole new, uh, I don't want to call it a rabbit hole, but treasure trove of ideas for the manuscript to continue to improve upon it. One of the biggest things that you'll probably address with your agent is pacing and structure of the novel. So what are some areas that feel a bit slow, especially after a really high action scene? Do the flashback scenes need to be better organized in a timeline so that it kind of breaks apart the novel in a more uh, streamlined way? Can there be some scenes that are consolidated that happen in the same place? For example, they're meeting again at the gas station. Is there a reason why, is that, is that HQ? Is there a reason why they're going there? If not, maybe consolidating that scene or putting it in a different setting might help with the pacing and structure of the book. And then most of my editorial feedback to my clients are sort of in the form of questions so that the answer can kind of start to grow in the imagination a little bit more. And in terms of character development, it might be genre specific, it might be uh, category specific. So why is the grump annoyed at Little Miss Sunshine if it's romance? Or why are the animals so important to the main character here in this picture book um, metaphor that you're using? Um, or just, you know, what is the motive for this villain? Because it sounds like I'm kind of gravitating toward this, this character, but I want them to have a little bit more of a spotlight on the page. Um, and sometimes the answers to these questions don't need to be said in the novel, but it does spark that missing puzzle piece that can help restructure or feeds that aha moment that you might not get immediately while reading the feedback, but on a walk with your dog. And each category could also have specific areas that you focus on with your agent. For example, for picture books, you might sort of work with your agent to figure out if the illustrator notes could serve better as text to inform the story structure versus as just a direction for the artist. For middle grade and YA, you might talk about appropriate themes between the categories for the age groups. Uh, for graphic novels, you might focus more on sort of the outline of the chapter beats and the structure of the story. Um, for more adult books, you might dive in more specifically for genre, like if it's a mystery, kind of plotting out the mystery a little bit more. And for nonfiction, it might be more for the proposal structure. So not to say that some of these things might not, um, like for genre specifically cross over, but these are just some examples that you could work with your agent for category. And then this final round after you've sort of worked through all those kinks um, and it could be round two or round three with your agent, it really just depends on the developmental edits that you're doing together. Uh, but this final round should be cleaning up those last areas before it's ready for submission. And this is really the final countdown before probably the part that we all struggle with the most and that's release. <laughs> um, and it's time to celebrate and you've done all that you can. I personally like to go buy a sub sandwich because I'm on sub. But you do you and celebrate accordingly. Uh, maybe you can honor one of your characters, take a walk, write them a letter, something that just really lets you release because you've really done all that you can as a author at this point and it's time for your agent to take the lead into the next step. You can talk to your agent about what to work on while you're on sub or you can decide to take some time off too, that's okay. So let's say that your agent is getting some feedback after you've let go of the project and they're on sub, what's next? And I like to call this sort of that mid-submission revision. So this is where the UNO reverse card will come in. As the months go by and you're on submission with your agent, um, your agent should be sort of tracking data points on feedback as more editors pass on your project. So you might get notes from an editor, which bring in that UNO reverse card and you'll go back into revision mode with your agent if you both feel like that's the right next step for your journey in this project together. But it's really important to continue to trust your uh, agent in the process. So you might we meet with an editor to talk about their vision for the book and then debrief with your agent after. 
And this is why it's really important to be honest with your agent and communicate anything that might have you feel uncomfortable or that you really love this editor and they see the vision for your book and you want to work with them on a revision for this. So just remember that trust is key here and communication is the best way to work on building that trust. You shouldn't be afraid to speak up to your agent and let them know that that one thing that they said in the meeting wasn't really something that resonated with you for your book. So that's sort of the process, high level. Of course, nothing's perfect. So there's a lot of Uno reverse cards that come into play sometimes, but I wanted to share some tips on how to actually tackle the revision once you're working on your own um, with the feedback that you get. And I like to use what I call the traffic light technique. Um, and I think this kind of my project management experiment skills are showing, uh, but I like looking at um, sort of the edits or feedback as tasks from the edit letter or the feedback that I get from my agent uh, as a writer. And so I always tell my writers, you're gonna wanna organize or my clients that you wanna organize um, the priority of like the revision so it can help you tackle the difficulty and not feel stressed or overwhelmed by all the work that you need to do. So organizing it by priority can also help it fit your busy life schedule. And so that if there are days where you only have time for a green light edit, you still feel like you're making progress on the revision and maybe you set aside a Saturday to tackle a harder puzzle piece. So some examples for that could be um, a red light could be, you know, brand new chapters or scenes that you and your agent talk about that there needs to be something more here and you have an idea for a new chapter. Um, it could also be the massive restructuring of the book uh, that needs post-it notes. Or if you use Scrivener, kind of like really going into that and reworking um, the structure of the book, it's gonna take a longer time. So I categorize that as like high priority or a red light. Um, and then for yellow light, you could do chapters that just need new dialogue, something a little less intimidating, but does require you a little bit more focus um, or chapters that have sort of the same scene and you're working on pacing that you wanna combine. And then for green light examples could be just minor line edits or I gotta go in and change the name of this character and call it a day. And that's all that I had time to do today. Um, but it just helps sort of tackle the letter in a different way or tackle the feedback in an easier manageable way without getting overwhelmed. You could also do the opposite and think of green light as the hard, but I feel like it's harder to start from scratch uh, personally, but if you do need to start from scratch, let's say you need to restart the draft or you want to start over for whatever reason, um, the Story Corps with Victoria Schwab is a great resource that shows uh, her draft process of the different parts that build the story. So uh, she calls it the Story Corps. It's on YouTube. It's free online. It's kind of like a master class. I really love watching that. And then another resource online is through Pub Crawl uh, by author Julie C. Dow, and it's in a four part series where she breaks down her process to revising. Um, and this is sort of in a blog post format. So the other one's a video if you wanna take notes. And this one is a blog for blog posts that kind of break down different parts of her revision process, even to the point of being in the public eye and what that means after all this, uh, all the revision happens behind the scenes. And the last thing I wanted to address was word count. So the Manuscript Academy has a great graphic that breaks it out by category. But when you're thinking about word count, I think you really should ask yourself more about if you're over the category word count, maybe you need to think a little bit more about pacing. Or if you're under the category word count, maybe you need to think a little bit about the meat of the story or what parts of that story corpse that you need to add in to 
make it kind of hit that uh, recommended genre word count by category. And all that to say is that writing really is rewriting, but it's also the ultimate trust fall. And there's really not one way to go about the revision process, but it really does help having that creative business partner in your agent that will help the process be a little bit more enjoyable, having that champion and encourager on your team navigating that process with you. Um, I won't say it will make it easier, but it could ease the stress uh, because every time you feel like you have finished and you label your work final, it might not be final and that's okay. So um, I'd love to answer any questions uh, and have Sam also jump in and answer any questions uh, or ask me anything um, about the presentation. Amazing. Thank you so much, Monica. That was just so well articulated and so thorough. Um, and I know that the attendees are really like chomping at the bit for all of the information. <laughs> shared. Um, so we do have some questions that have come in. Um, so I want to make sure we answer those and then I'll answer some general questions, which I think would be organic follow ups to what you had. Um, so I guess one of the first ones that came through. Um, Sorry, apologies. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can okay. drink another sip of tea. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Okay, so one of the first questions that I did want to answer, which is kind of like more audience and broad, what state should the manuscript be in before sending to an agent at like the querying stage, I guess? Should writers be paying for developmental edits and such before querying or giving it to an agent? So earlier stage. Yeah, so I think... Um, as a writer, it's really hard, or writing is really isolating and it's really hard for you to determine, you know, when is my manuscript ready? I think the biggest thing is uh, to, the first thing you have to do is write the first draft, but know that that first draft is really just the skeleton. Um, it's a great accomplishment and it is something that should be celebrated. Um, but I think it helps to know that um, and that's why I really do like Victoria Schwab's um, sort of masterclass about the story corpse, because it helps you feel like every step that you take to adding a layer to your manuscript is going to make it improve it and make it better. Um, I would make sure that after the first draft, you kind of read it, take some time away from it, come back to it. Um, and then write, uh, I think one of, I'm forgetting who wrote it, but reading in your category about craft, but also reading in your reading about craft in other categories like screenwriting, like playwriting for dialogue, that's really helpful to continue to improve your craft. So reading about writing, taking a break, writing yourself a letter of, this is what I intended to write. And this is what I actually wrote. And then seeing if there's holes and things, or it might be like, wow, this is an entirely new manuscript. I don't hate that. Maybe I'll go this way and just continue following that sort of gut until you get to a point where you just can't read it anymore. And that point is where I would go out and look for um, critique partners in a writing group. Um, you can play for critiques. There's a lot of different places online, but I don't think that that's a requirement um, to be a writer. Um, I wouldn't recommend, unless you need just like really big encouragement, like showing it to your mom or your dad, um, that is an option and could be a first step. But I think it's really important to show it to another writer, at least, and a beta reader. There's beta readers online that you can um, you can connect with. And once you've sort of done a couple of rounds of feedback through those editorial points and process, I think watching informational free webinars like this, um, doing your research online about best querying practices and stepping into that new chapter of learning new skills on how to get the 
pitch letter ready for your manuscript because it's two different things, writing the manuscript and then pitching the book. And once you feel confident in that, um, and you can even have friends look at your query, writer friends look at your query letter as well. Um, then at that point, I think I would start querying. I think if you start querying too soon, you might set yourself up for a lot more heartache. And it's not that um, your, you know, your dreams or your ambitions are not, um, you know, at the point where they need to be. It's just that it takes time for these things to be in a good place. Um, and so that's sort of the spark note version of what of the time. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Sam, but yeah, I, I feel like I fully agree with what you said. I think um, it can feel like you need to have a developmental editor, but it is not a mandatory requirement. I think writing the draft and creating space and then also, you know, tapping in a writing group, because I think being able to have that exchange where someone knows the market and knows the information that you're, you're tapped into as well, and being able to, to work together to get that manuscript to its strongest point, it can feel like, you know, you're ready very early, but it never hurts to take some time away from it and then come to it with fresh eyes um, before you send it off to an agent. Um, so yeah, well said. Um, and then we didn't touch on this um, in the presentation, but I think it's a question worth answering. Um, how do you find the right agent for you? Um, just talking about narrowing down that search a little bit. Yeah, so I think um, you're already reading, or I hope you should be reading. And one of the like secrets that I didn't really dive too much into until someone else had said it is to read the acknowledgement section of the books that you love. Because oftentimes authors are thinking their agents, they're thinking their editors, looking to see where that book was published by what imprint. I think that's a great start since you already have books that you've purchased or you check them out from your library, start um, adding that step to after you read. If, if, you, if you really love the book and you resonate with a lot of themes from the book, you think of it as something that you can compare it to or comp it to in a query letter, I think that's a great start to start uh, building a list. Um, manuscriptwishlist.com is a great resource. There are agents there that post their manuscript wish lists online that you can look through that um, you can filter through category and through genre. Um, following agents online on social media um, through that sort of jump off point to kind of get a sense. Sometimes agents will post about manuscript wish lists or they'll post about their clients. Um, researching their clients to see who else they represent. It's kind of like a breadcrumb scavenger hunt that you kind of can start going through. Uh, but the best way to start is by looking through the books that you're already reading, especially the ones that sort of inspire um, the book that you're writing. Um, other places, um, Publishers Marketplace is an industry um, database it does require payment to access full uh to have full access to it it's not a requirement but that's another resource some of the agents um list their deal maker pages for free so it's public um and that could be another source of information as well yeah you you took all of the <laughs> suggestions i had to <laughs> People, I often suggest that acknowledgments um, one first because obviously you're often reading in your category. Um, and even if you maybe don't find the agent who's listed in the acknowledgments, you can start at their agency and look at um, some of the books um, that they work on, and that will usually be very prominent. So, yeah, all of the, the things I would say. Um, okay, so we had a question here um, where they wanted to hear you kind of speak a little more to the difference between developmental and structural editing? So I think when you're working with your agent, it your agent could fall in love with your book so much and want to represent you that that initial offer call represent for representation might even be at the 
stage of an R&R &R, or revise and resubmit. And that agent basically for that process is that agent will sort of give you a, a, a short little editorial at letter of the areas they believe that you might want to address. Developmentally could be bigger themes or maybe um, character dynamics that would consider like macro big picture stuff uh, for, and then could also just address a couple of like smaller things um, to consider. But um, when you first start working with your agent, they'll have that same conversation with you about here are some of the things that I think the manuscript needs to address. The important thing to remember is that all of this is speculative. And so <clears throat> I might have an idea, but another agent might have a different idea. And so um, <clears throat> can you can you take over, Sam, for one yeah, second? Yeah, of course, no worries. Well, I clear my throat. No, uh, that's fine. Okay, so yeah, I think for, in my experience, I like to think of developmental edits as like big picture. So thinking about character development, uh, pacing and things like that. And that tends to be on a larger scale. I'll usually offer those insights on an, at an offer, maybe on an offer call to make sure that this is someone that's aligned with what I, my editorial style and what I like to do. Um, but then on a structural level, I think is when we're getting like elbow deep, right? So I'm specifically referencing details like, okay, we have flashback chapters every other chapter. And what if we played around with when we introduced them? Um, so that for me would be more of a structural change because it's like either removing these chapters, playing around with their location, playing around with the, the spacing of it, as long as it helps progress the story in the right direction. Um, so that's a little bit of what I think about structurally, but then yeah, developmental would be bigger picture. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Sorry about that. Should have jumped in sooner. <laughs> no, I raised my hand. I asked for help. <laughs> yeah. Did you have anything to add for structural? Do you think? Um, no, I guess I will say a lot of the feedback that I've been getting from editors does have to do with pacing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's something that as an agent, I try to make sure I cover as much as possible because it's so hard to, um, the market is really hard right now. And so as my job, it's to make sure that knowing all of these things that we address it so that it doesn't become a pass. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just insight. And that's a great reason why to ha why agents, um, the more that we work on books, the more we get a pulse of what editors are saying. And so we pass it along to new clients that we sign as well. Yeah, I think now more so than ever too, we're seeing that a lot of the feedback is about pacing and about these kind of larger developmental issues because we're kind of competing not just with other books nowadays, but with TikTok and YouTube and other forms of content. So we are paying attention to like concept and pacing and character development because um, it's even tougher now than before. Um, so actually that's a perfect segue into the next question. Um, someone wanted us to speak a little bit about um, the feedback, I didn't connect with the protagonist the way I had hoped um, in terms of that being a reaction to queries or full manuscript requests. And what advice would we give to an author to make that character more maybe accessible? Um, yeah, I think um, that's the thing about feedback is it is really speculative. As an agent, um, it's really important for me to be able to think about how to make the book better so that I show up at the same level that you've already shown up as an author. And if it almost feels like I'm doing a disservice to the author by not having that aha moment that I feel I really need to contribute to make the manuscript better and improve it and solidify that relationship. Um, so if one agent doesn't if one agent's feedback or rejection says something like I didn't connect with the character enough, it might just be that, that, you know, it was not that sort of when you read a book yourself and you don't necessarily connect to the character as agents, I think 
it's really important for us. And you'll have, you'll hear a lot of agents say, I really have to love it. And the reason for that is that's how we become your best champion. And as writers, it's something important to, to, to know when you're navigating through rejection, you really want that person that's going to love it as much of, as you do, if not maybe more, because there's going to be a lot of time in this journey where unfortunately you're going to continue to get rejection. So even after the query trenches process, when you send these books out to editors, these editors are responding sort of in the same way. Like I loved it, but it's just not the right fit for my list. Or I love this character, but I didn't really love the other character. And it's a dual POV. And as an agent, I'm like, they're I still believe in it like don't worry you like we'll find the right fit so that's why I say like it's so important to like we're looking for a third musketeer right so in that partnership you don't want to start off a partnership trying to prove that your character is like the best person if someone already doesn't feel that way I think there's a difference between trying to um, make an agent love your character and find the agent that's going to get your character out of his shell a little bit and be more prominent on the page. And so what you're looking for is that agent that wants to know more about this character and not so much get hung up on the agent that doesn't understand the character. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, thing. I think the, it's hard to receive the feedback that like they just didn't connect to the character, but I think it's hard to pinpoint as any one specific reason, which I think is why the, the feedback is somewhat vague. Um, I think what an author can do is kind of take that feedback to think about like, if you didn't know this character, or maybe it's worth asking one of the CPs or beta readers to read that character and think about like what questions come up. It can be for a number of things. You know, does it take a while for us to build that emotional investment in the character? Do we understand their motivations very early? Is if there's multiple POVs or multiple characters on the page, do you distinguish that character's voice from the others? And I think all of those things can be um, thoughts that you um, ask or questions you ask yourself as you're revising to consider. Maybe it's one of those elements that that um, ultimately didn't connect. But I think every agent is different, <laughs> and so every opinion. Um, someone may comment on something else, but it's all about doing what's authentic to you. So if you feel like the character is the voice and everything is exactly how you want it, then it's about waiting and seeing until you find that right agent, or it's about asking those questions and digging deeper into your character work. Agreed. Okay, so I think this is a really interesting question. Um, so it asks, how do you work with clients on new projects after you sign with them? So obviously we get a query, we love it, we get on the phone, we offer, but if we're working on the next project, how do you kind of start that process? Is Are you involved in the brainstorming of ideas or do you prefer for the client to kind of come to you with almost that query ready, ready manuscript too? Um, this is another one where every agent is different in terms of process for um, managing or strategizing with their client's career. For me personally, on the call itself, I like to talk about, you know, what other categories are you interested in writing? Um, if it's picture book, I usually request two or three manuscripts before I even get on a call to make sure that for that specific category, I resonate with all of their work. For every other category, um, I focus in on making sure that I love that first book. And then we talk about just kind of like their vision for their career so that I feel like I can support it and see it as well. Um, I'm the kind of agent that I like to work on one book at a time with my clients. So we get the book that we both agree is the strongest to go out and we finesse and do this whole revision timeline process together. And once it's on sub, I have a brainstorm call conversation to kind of really focus on letting go. So we talk about, you know, what do you want to write about? What excites you? And this is where they can bring like, they can just sort of pitch me ideas and then get really embarrassed. They're like, never mind, that was like a really bad idea. I'm like, no, I actually think that's a really great idea. Or they say, like, have I told you about this one? And I'm like, no. 
why haven't you told me about that one? And like, I thought you were going to hate it. And I was like, well, that's the one that you need to write next. So <laughs> don't hide ideas from me. Um, so I like to work with my clients to try to figure out, and I kind of watch them pitch me ideas and then watch their face and watch their reaction. And then when they just go off on a tangent on something that is just like, I, and then all of a sudden they're like, but I don't know. And I was like, oh, well, you just completely lit up the room with that one. I think you should dive into that sandbox. And I do have clients that in order to kind of like get to that point where they feel completely <clears throat> lit up and inspired to write something new, they need to play in different sandboxes. So will approve like two or three sandboxes that I feel like these are great projects to kind of keep working on and everybody's writing processes is different. And so when one of the <laughs> Mario Karts gets ahead and has more word counts, they'll kind of come back to me, send me a full synopsis. And then I'll, at that point, I'm like, okay, structurally, this makes sense, go off and write it. And then some clients, um, if structurally we're like in agreement, but I kind of, it's, they're going to try a new boy, like a new perspective. Like they usually write in first person and they kind of want to try third. Maybe I'll ask for like a first chapter just to make sure and guide them and encourage them in that way. And so that I'm not um, surprised or like, I couldn't like help set them up for success foundationally before they went off and write the written and, and write the whole thing. So I'm involved in the process in terms of brainstorming, but once we kind of are at the same page of what we want to work on next, um, they go out and do their thing and I go out and do my thing and continue to uh, track the submission. And then after like a year, which some projects could take a year to sort of like get answers back from editors, I'll check in and say, okay, so I think, especially now, like I'm meeting with my clients towards the end of the year, here are my expectations or like what we've talked about that you want to write for next year. And I think this is a great next project to go out with once this other project we've been on sub four is just kind of, we're just waiting to hear back. Um, so that's my process, but Sam's might be a little bit different. So I'm, I'm actually curious to hear what yours is. <laughs> so mine is actually very similar. I like, I treat every client's different. Every writer's different. And so I try to be like really respectful of like at what point is most helpful for me to be involved. Um, so some people are like, I want to send you like, I want to get on a phone call and like talk through some little ideas that I'm having. Um, and then like, tell me what feels marketable. Tell me what doesn't. Um, and so similarly, I would discuss like, okay, this sandbox <laughs> feels like the right one to play in. Um, and so we'll also have those conversations. Some people are like, I need to write you a short like deal announcement style pitch and like you tell me which one has the most um, marketability from there but whichever method they choose I usually start off asking a lot of questions figuring out um you know asking kind of speaking to the market a little bit like where what scene does this open up with who's our main character and why are we meeting them right now versus like five days ago or five years ago um and so I start to ask those questions but yeah quite clearly there's often like a, for, a front runner for the project that's like I'm the most excited to write that and regardless of the market like we can always address those concerns about pacing and development later like finding the joy in the process is the most important thing and you have to hold on to it because the rest of this journey yeah. can be really tough <laughs> Um, so I always advise kind of like chasing that and then writing as much as you feel like having me weigh in at whatever point makes sense. The synopsis is always preferred so I can see the whole scale and I can weigh in on like, okay, well, it feels like there's not much stakes, the emotional stakes and the out like external stakes are not lining up quite here. Um, let's figure out a way we can make them both hit at the same time. So yeah, the process is very different um, once you're officially signed, but it's always unique and catered to the relationship you have with your agent. So yes, lots of opportunities there, which is fun. That's the fun part for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, speaking a little bit to um, the timeline. So we talked about how there can be different rounds. Are, are there specific times that like you quote for a process or do you put a timeline on how many, how long we should be doing revisions for? 
that wasn't a question in the chat. That was just something that came to my yeah, mind. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't really like to get when I when we're first working, let's say on the first project that we're doing together with my client and I, I don't like to give deadlines unless they need them. There's some writers that need the deadline to make sure that they kind of hold themselves accountable. So I call it like more of a gentle reminder that I'll put sometimes I'll put it as a calendar invite and just title it gentle reminder milestone point you don't have to finish it but <laughs> I'm just gentle parenting is what I do <laughs> with my clients um until of course because I feel like there will come a point where the deadline is contractual and is um something that as your agent I I will help sort of manage if you're not able to meet but it, it gets at the point that we're working together, it should feel um, like I don't want to rush the creative process. There are certain times within publishing where, for example, we're kind of entering the holidays soon. So like November, December, I won't usually submit anything else um, at the end of the year. And so on a timeline with my clients, anything sort of between before between like January and October we can like have a plan work on something and the deadline as in like the last possible month for me to get this out this year is probably like first week of November I don't know if you push it Sam but that's sort of been my <laughs> this is about the same time we're getting there. It's Halloween. It's okay and I've actually had to have a lot of conversations with my clients um, that we were planning on going out on sub in October, but um, there was just a couple of, there was, there for one, there was one, one area that just like, like I couldn't get the idea off the ground for, uh, life happened, some, like that kind of pushed the time able to kind of like dedicate the focus to that. And so we both sort of agreed, like, why rush it? It's okay. It's two months. Let's give you two more months to like really work this out. And then we can be set up for success in January. So I never want to put my clients in a position where we're rushing a new idea to go out on sub because like Sam said, that should be like the happy place that we work together to like retain the joy and continue to like water it together. Um, as far as like timelines within like submissions, it's, it's the wild west. Like I, I can't, I don't promise anything um, because editors are also behind on reading. I think the industry is a very, is at a very um, delicate burnout teetering territory. And so making sure that we that's why it's so important to revise with your agent and get it to the best place possible so that um, anywhere between six months to a year, I don't, I kind of follow a three, six, nine checkpoint method. <laughs> so in month three of submission, if I haven't heard back, I'm kind of, and this is not based on my follow-ups. It's based on just like tracking data to see like, okay, are we getting some sort of feedback that is, semi-mentioning pacing, semi-mentioning a character, semi-mentioning something. If I got haven't gotten more than like three data points, I just continue to monitor my submission list and keep adding to it. At the Even at the six month mark, when I'm following up with editors, I still get editors that say they haven't gotten to it yet. And so I think one of the biggest things to remember as an author is that it's not you it's, it, they're not even talking to you, they're talking to me. And so they're reading your submission when they can get to it. And I've also had editors where I am following up and they tell me, I haven't stopped thinking about this one. I really wanna get to it, which is a great sign. And I'm like, well, I hope you keep thinking about it <laughs> because I want you to eventually read it and really enjoy it. So. I think that's why there's so much that you can't really control with time. And one of the important things is to celebrate the small victories and release. And really the only thing that you can do is write something new while you wait. Um, 
at least that's my perspective on it. Yeah, no, that, that makes total sense. Um, I agree. I think timelines, um, I think probably before the pandemic, like maybe I was a little more rigid, um, but I think everyone, you just want to create space for, um, for life that can happen and the creative process, which can take a couple rounds and take a couple um, like different periods of time to, to get through. But the most important thing is to like look at it and feel like you're doing everything you can to get it to its strongest place. And I think there's a natural stopping point um, at which we, we kind of do that. So yeah, wholeheartedly agree with your, with your process. Um, so actually, I think this is a really great, like maybe our last question. Um, what if the author and agent disagree on edits or the author thinks the agent wants to change too much? How do you handle slash proceed? I think um, at the beginning, when you're first sort of like learning how you both work together, it's important to communicate um, what you, what's important to you in the manuscript, um, because you don't want resentment to build halfway through the revision with your agent. And then you're really just like kind of writing to sort of please somebody versus writing to advocate for your work. And so the agent should be there to guide you and should have um, feedback that is taken into account with, you know, other submissions we have out, what's going on in the market. That's sort of like what our role is to help support that. If there's a detail that you feel like it's really important for the grandma to be this way, because that's how my experience was, and it's tied to your authenticity for that, I think providing context like that to your agent is really important so that if along the process it comes up, then the agent can be on your team and like be an advocate for that. Um, I think if it's something like, disagreement in terms of the agent is really advising that the manuscript is just too long and we really need to cut it down and it's more of like a market thing but you feel you disagree with that I think in that case um, that's where it can be a little bit tricky and you might get to a point where you both sort of reach some sort of compromise but then you might get the same sort of feedback from editors and then you both kind of agree to go back to it. So it's not like a right or wrong decision or path. I think it's just takes time to trust your agent, especially if this is your third agent that you're working with, um, or, you know, this book is really difficult for you to write and you're trying your best to sort of <clears throat> be authentic and hold true to what it is versus trying to fit a box in the market, especially if you're a BIPOC author. And so I think it's it's important to build that relationship, but if there are certain things that your agent points out that you just don't agree with, ultimately, it is your book and your agent, you know, should support it. Um, if your agent ever makes you feel uncomfortable for whatever reason, I think that kind of goes back to that, is this how I want my business, creative business partnership to be? And you can certainly address that um, with them and just let them know, you know, advocate for yourself in that way. But I don't think any agent is trying to change the book uh, to that where it's for some ulterior motive other than to help you succeed or improve. I know manuscripts or even the manuscript that I queried with my agent is not the same manuscript that's out on submission right now. And that just goes to show that through working with an agent developmentally, it can become a brand new thing and that's a good thing. And so I think it's just important to have really strong boundaries and advocate for yourself to make sure that you're being heard, but at the same time, not rewriting the book just to get an just to sign with an agent. Yeah, I could not have said it better myself. I, I think all edits are suggestions and every agent is trying to speak to their specific experience, the market that they're seeing, the feedback that they've had in conversations with it, with editors and also that they're seeing in their submissions. And so the aim is always to get it to the strongest point, but 
it's a suggestion you like I believe authors always have the ultimate veto power like if this is not working for you that's fine and I think it is well within your rights depending on what the feedback is referring to to reassess the relationship um, depending on the severity um, of it so yeah well I think that brings us to time um, this has been such a lovely conversation um, I'm so glad we were able to work with Authors Guild and Johnny to, to discuss revising with an agent, which I know is a very specific experience. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for sharing your insight with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Monica, and thank you, Samantha. You, you covered so much ground, and to anyone out there whose question went unanswered, please know that the Authors Guild programming team, we follow up on those and it can help us you know, produce future programming. Um, we'll do a, an event uh, just like this with another another couple of agents on Monday, December 11th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, look out for our emails. Uh, you can go to authorsguild.org uh, to get our newsletter if you don't already. And always feel free to email uh, me at support at authorsguild.org uh, for info or resources that I might be able to find for you. All right. Thanks to AALA and Literary Agents of Change. This has been great. Thanks for doing this agent talks with us. Awesome. Thank you Bye. so much. Bye, everyone. Have a great night. Bye-bye.